Hi, my name is Westbam. It's been a while, but uh, let's see if we can pick up where we left. In this tutorial, I want to show you about logic. Let's quickly build a scene so we got something to play with. I'm just going to put a bunch of random quads on the renderer. So I need a random spread. Duplicate it, Control D. One for the X axis, one for the Y axis, Control D again and one for the scale. I also need a transform. That's a transform 2D. I need a quad of course. And if I middle click on the outlet of the quad, I get a group node. And if I middle click on the outlet of the group, I get a renderer. And this is a nice new trick inside VVV. Okay, if I press Alt 2, I am docking the renderer. And now I can move this stuff below. I don't really need a group node this time, but let's keep it anyway. Let's connect one random seed to translate X, one random seed to translate I, and the other one for scale X and also for scale I. And of course the transform goes to the quad. And now I can quickly change some values for the random spreads. I need a width of two, a spread count of, I don't know, 500, another spread count of 500, and of course a width of two. And for the scale, I don't know, let's make it 600. Make the scale a bit smaller. And as you can see now, we got this weird diagonal line, but that's because we used the same seeds for the X and the Y axis. So if I just change this seed to something else, and this one also, and this one also, we get a nice renderer with random quads. Okay, let's make two color nodes. I make the IO box color. I double right click, pick color. And if you now right click and drag, you can change the color. And I want a nice blue. And another one. This is going to be a nice purple tint. I want to make these two colors into a spread for now. So I use a cons node for concentrate. So I want to concentrate these two colors in one spread. And if I now color my quads, we got a bunch of purple and blue quads. This is exactly what I was looking for. If you're following along, yours might look a bit different, but that's because you are, might be using a different random seed or different spread counts. So no worry about it. It's all random, so that's cool. Now, what I want to have, what I want to make, is one side, the left side, with all blue quads, and the right side, I want to create all purple quads. In normal coding, this would be an if-then statement. So let's make something similar inside VVV. To do this, I need to figure out if the quad is on the left side of the y-axis or on the right side of the y-axis. In other words, I want to know if the translate x is either positive to the right or negative to the left. The most general way to compare values is with the Boolean nodes. A basic Boolean compares two values and outputs a 0 or a 1, depending if the comparison is false or true. 0 be false and 1 be true. Let me start by showing you the most simple of Booleans, that's the equal sign, equal value. Well, it's not the simplest one, but it's the most obvious one. And if you look at the help file, so select it, hit F1, you can see what it does. The equal node will compare two values, and if the values are the same, it will output a 1. While it also got an epsilon pin, and that's a bit like the range. So 1 and 2 are equal to each other, but that's because the epsilon is set to 1. And here the epsilon is set to 0, so if I change this value, I right click and drag, the values are not equal anymore. Now let's jump back to our quads, and I'll show you how we can use this in a practical way. For my quads, I don't want to know if they're equal to something, I want to know if they're bigger or smaller than something. So we got some nodes to do that, and that's the smaller than node and the bigger than node. For this tutorial, I'm going to delete this one, and we're going to use this node. We're going to use it to compare every translate x slice with zero. If I select the node and I look at her inspector at the output, I see all these ones and zeros. And now we have a spread with all zeros and ones. And we're going to use this spread to switch between purple and blue. So to do that, I need a switch node. Switch. And we're going to switch colors. So we're going to use switch 
color input. And this switch node will color our quads depending on the position in the renderer, either it's on the left or to the right. So let's connect our colors. Color one goes to input one, and the other color goes to input two. I don't need the cons node anymore, I can delete it. How this switch node works, if the switch set to zero, it will output the color from input one, that's blue. And if I switch it to one, it will output the color on input two. So now the output is purple. In here in Spectre over here, I can change the input count. So if I right click and drag up, I can create a lot more input pins. But for now we only need two. So now I'm going to connect the smaller then node to the switch. And it switches 500 times. And if I connect the switch to the quad, you will see that I've mixed up my smaller then and bigger then nodes again. But for now that's fine. So now every quad that's on the left side of zero is purple and every quad that's on the right side is blue. And the weird thing here in the center you see is because the position is based on the center of the quad. So the center of the quad is bigger than zero or the center of this quad is smaller than zero. And if I now change the random spread, I change the seed, I change the spread count or I change this seed and spread count or this one, the quads are still colored correctly. And this is all because what I explained in previous lessons about repeating spreads and spread counts. And if I compare the spread for the translate i with zero, I can do exactly the same. And if I hook up a equal sign to the switch, I see that there is nothing happening because there are not many nodes exactly zero. So if I increase the epsilon, and if I now change the value that I'm comparing it with, I can move the purple band up or down. Well, this is the very beginning of doing some logic inside PVV. In the next lesson I want to take this one step further and I want to show you how we can combine two of these boolean nodes to get four colors, one color for every corner. I know it sounds easy but it can be a bit tricky inside PVV, especially when you're working with different spread counts. Well, my name is Wesbem. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you all next time.